11, 11, 11. What a legendary date for a mathematical mind. And I want to say first off that there's nothing really significant about this date in particular, but it is neat to see the ones monopolize a shorthand form, which occurs once a century. There are some things that come to mind, though, when I think of the number 11, and specifically 1-1. One, one. First, Genesis 1-1. One, one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We see this is the overarching heading to creation. We see God as our wonderful and creative God who provides us new beginnings. And this is true even today. And he provides us new beginnings through Jesus. In John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The next few verses, the same was in the beginning with God, as well as everything that was created was created through him, and nothing that was made was made without him. Eleven verses after that, the Word was made flesh, and he dwelt among us. And we see Jesus came as a sacrifice for our sins. He lived a perfect, sinless life, and he gives us new beginnings through faith in him. We can also take some lessons from the number 11, and specifically some negative examples that we shouldn't follow. There are 11 rulers in the Old Testament who were pointed out for being angry at God's prophets when they brought them his message. Let's not be like that. Hebrews warns us so many times, do not harden your hearts. And so let's not be like Pharaoh or Herod or Balak or Zedekiah. Let's always have humble hearts before God, always attentive to his voice, to his Holy Spirit's leading, and let's walk in his blessings. Of the 12 disciples that Jesus picked, only 11 remained faithful. And some people will say that Jesus was a failure because he picked Judas Iscariot to be his disciple. Not so. It's very clear that Jesus had a very sovereign plan in all of this. In Mark, there's a theme of discipleship failure, and the disciples pre-Pentecost, before the Holy Spirit was poured out, didn't get some of what Jesus was saying or doing or predicting. Jesus was saying, I need to be betrayed into the hands of sinners and be sacrificed. I might give my life as a ransom for many. And then I'll resurrect on the third day. And he was telling them this, and they totally didn't get it sometimes. But we see here that Jesus knew what he was doing, even in picking Judas Iscariot. But a lesson here, don't be a Judas. So many times we want to be a John and lay our head on the bosom of Jesus and be so close to him, but we're a Judas and we're betraying him in sin. Let's repent. Let's follow Jesus. Let's love him more each day. So I would say, seize the day. But instead, I'll say, carpe diem. Pro Jesus, seize the day for Jesus. And in the last 11 seconds of this video, you might want to find a place to pray, to commit your life to the Lord, to purify your heart before him, and may the Holy Spirit enable you, regardless of how mundane or how unique a date is, to do what he has for you to do today. God bless you.